Hello everyone and welcome back to week two of my progress report. So as some of you guys know, myself and the team, we're currently in our eight week team challenge and I'm committing to the process by going all in and sharing with you my weekly progress. So let's start off with what actually happened in my week. Well, first of all, gyms reopened back in Melbourne, back in Victoria, which is such a huge relief, I'm sure, for every single business owner. Um, it just feels so good to be back with your members, with your community, and doing what it is that you actually, the reason why you started, the reason why you opened a business, going back to doing that. So definitely this week, I feel like there is a huge weight that's been lifted up and off my shoulders. Um, but having said that, it has been definitely a busy week. So if I look at my Fitbit data, on average, I was definitely clocking in around 20,000 steps per day. So my NEAT um, and my activity levels definitely up this week. And I'll go back to kind of how that may have affect my, affected my results in just a moment. The second thing is as gyms are now back and being open, I definitely feel like my stress levels have dropped down a peg. And in fact, I did, did something on Sunday, which I honestly haven't done in such a long time. I actually picked up a book and read. Not only that, I actually found that I was like, what am I gonna do with my time? I've got no work to do, which I can honestly say that has not happened for such a long period of time. So going back to my eight week challenge goals, one of them was to stop, to slow down and to decompress. I definitely feel like I have done that this week. So not only was I able to read, I was able to take some time out and um, being back to a normal schedule between Jeremy and I, we can work out a bit of a better schedule to be looking after Sky. So it means that when I'm with Sky, I can really be there being fully present and enjoying my, his company so that um, later on, I know I'm gonna be able to get my work done, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, the next thing that I can say that's, uh, I guess, helped um, was the fact that I, my, while my workouts have been a little bit shorter because I've been so busy, I've definitely gotten them done. I would say um, I was able to get my training sessions done, cutting them back a little bit, maybe to 20 to 30 minutes, um, while still keeping um, the intensity and the load of my training up. And I also managed to jump on and film a HIIT workout for the online community, which was awesome. So make sure you go in and you check that out. And I just did a Muay Thai session with Somi. So one of my goals was to include two high intensity sessions a week just to help with fat loss. Um, the other thing I can say that's happened this week is that my food has been pretty consistent. Um, to keep things easy, I decided to eat pretty much the same thing every day, um, which is my two eggs on toast for breakfast, one piece of toast, my coffee. Mid-morning snack is usually oats um, and protein. For lunch, it's usually some form of poached chicken with salad with sweet potato. Um, and then a lower calorie snack, maybe a hundred calorie snack in the afternoon. Um, and then a well-balanced carb, fat and protein dinner, usually picking a protein source that might have a little bit more fat in it, like a salmon or a beef. So my food has been really consistent too. So my progress, well, I can definitely say that I'm feeling a lot leaner this week. I took my progress photos and you can definitely see the visible changes. On the scale, I've dropped about uh, one point uh, 1.7 kilograms um, from the in-body scan. Um, but if you look at the progress between um, the photos, um, they are taken one month apart. You can really see um, that my waist is coming in, my glutes and thighs have also thinned out quite a lot. Um, and it just goes to show, firstly, the power of actually taking progress photos, um, because sometimes you, you might not necessarily, um, that might not necessarily be super reflective in your scale weight. Um, but also it's, it's great to track over time. And I'll be honest in saying that I do take progress photos usually every month, but I will say for the last few months, I really don't feel like they've changed a huge amount. So it's great to see that my progress photos, I can really start to see a visible change in, um, in those sequence of pictures. Um, so some great progress in terms of seeing drop a drop in body fat. Um, and in terms of my progress towards my strength goal, um, 
because of sort of my workouts being a little bit all over the shop this week, I decided to keep my load on my deadlift the same as what I did last week, which was 115 for three. Um, and that's fine because last week was the first time in me doing um, 115. So I usually like to increase my weight and maybe hit those weights for a couple of weeks before then overloading again. So I'll see how I feel next week. And if I'm ready to overload again, I will. Um, but I'll definitely be sharing with you next week how I am actually setting up my progressions on my big lifts. So for the rest of this video, I actually just wanna share a couple of tips that you might find helpful um, being that we're in week two and obviously the fact that Melbourne has opened up again. One of the things that keeps popping up in amongst our community is I've got these goals, but unfortunately I've also got all these social situations and how do I manage myself? How do I manage staying on track with working towards my goals while also being able to enjoy myself socially? Well, there's definitely a few tips that I'd like to share with you right now. The very first thing is, well, the very first thing is I want you to really think about those, so, that, those social situations, all right? Some coaches will say, well, how badly do you actually want to, you know, reach your goals? And, um, you know, maybe you should not drink or maybe you should um, avoid those situations. Unfortunately, setting yourself up like that that's really not gonna be helpful for you in the long run. Because if you think about what you actually want long term, okay, the long term plan of how you are tracking in terms of your health and fitness, I can guarantee the last thing you wanna be doing is avoiding social situations. So you really wanna be working on and building strategies that will actually help you manage those social situations in the long run, that you can actually go out, have fun, see your friends, celebrate occasions, but still be able to maintain a physique that you're really, really proud of. So the first thing I would say is try and plan ahead. Now, if you've got social situations, it's like a one-off, it's your birthday or whatever else, and you go a little crazy, okay, it happened, move on. But if you're a bit of a social butterfly and you know that you generally like to go out on the weekend, unfortunately, the truth is, you're gonna to have to start to develop a much better strategy that you'll make sure that your weekends, when it comes to the weekends, they're not bringing you undone. And also, you're not then filled with regret. Because if you're filled with regret, you're gonna be filling your brain with all that emotional response, that emotional baggage that you've done something wrong, which will then exacerbate the actions that you take that will be more likely then to, again, compromise you, your actions towards taking more proactive steps to actually achieve your goals. You're gonna be sitting there punishing yourself or bullying yourself, which is the opposite of really what you're wanting to do. So what sort of strategies am I talking about here? First of all, plan ahead. Now, every social situation is different. If you're going to a picnic, think about, well, what foods are gonna be at the picnic? What time of day am I going? Is there drinking that's gonna happen at the picnic? What sort of foods can I take to help keep myself on track? Can I take my own food? Can I take a share plate that I know will be helpful? And who will I be inspiring if I say, oh, I've actually bought this really healthy food choice um, that you might end up um, seeing some of your girlfriends and they'll be like, oh, thank God. Um, and they'll feel empowered to do the same. If you're going out to the pub and you're going out for say a meal and some drinks, well think about, okay, how many drinks do I actually wanna to have tonight? And where does that sit in amongst the rest of my week? Now, if you're going out and it's the one time once a week, you might have a few more drinks, but if that is say one night in amongst several where you're going out for drinks, I'd hate to say it, you are an adult, there are consequences towards your behavior. And I'm not saying one is bad or one is good. It is what it is. But if you wanna get results, you are gonna to have to start making some sacrifices, call them sacrifices, or maybe more disciplined action that will actually help you to continue to progress. So you might go, okay, well, tonight I am going out for a drink, but I have had a really busy, hectic week, and maybe this is more like a one glass a night kind of affair. Now, if you're going out for dinner and you've got any choice of where you're going, maybe pick somewhere where you know you can make a good choice. Have a look at the menu before you go. The other options and the other strategies that I like to use is I always pick the thing that has the most amount of protein and fiber in it. And being mindful of how much added fats 
the chefs could have added to make it taste really super delicious. So you could be looking at getting sauces on the side or no sauces or asking for, say, the salad to come undressed. And now taking those steps by asking for or, or looking for something on the menu that has the most amount of protein, you're going to be filling up your belly with um, a food item, protein, that has the highest thermic effect. Remembering that calories are not all created equal here, team. Just because there is four grams of calories, uh, for, sorry, four calories per gram of protein, which is the same as um, a carbohydrate, you actually burn 30% more energy by consuming protein. Now, it might not make much of a difference over the course of one meal, but over the course of the week, by choosing a higher protein meal, you could end up being something like 400 calories less across the week. And that really starts to add up when you're looking to put yourself in a calorie deficit. Not only that, protein will help turn on muscle resynthesis and help you feel satiated for longer. So pick something that's got a high amount of protein in it because it has a high thermic effect and also you'll feel fuller and you'll be less likely to maybe eat, a, eat all of your chips or whatever it is. So plan ahead. I can't stress that enough. Think ahead in that social situation. And it is my birthday week. So this is a great time for me to be talking about some of the strategies that I use. Now I've got a great week planned. I'm gonna be heading out for dinner with Jez um, tonight actually. And then I've got drinks with friends on Friday and then I'm gonna go out again on Saturday. Now I am gonna be making sure that I'm gonna choose my battles, pick my battles wisely. Um, so I'm going to be making sure that I'm going to go out tonight and enjoy a couple of glasses of wine and be really satisfied with that because then I'm going to be going out probably on Friday and maybe indulging just a little bit more. The other strategy I like to use is during the course of the day, I might try and keep my meals relative, relatively light to account for the fact that when you eat out, the meals generally contain more carbohydrates and fats. So over the course of today, I've definitely had a high amount of protein, a high amount of fiber, and less of some of those other macronutrients. It's just one strategy um, that I use, but one thing I don't do is I don't go out when I'm super, super, super hungry, so I don't avoid eating completely, and I make sure that I am well hydrated as well. The last thing I wanna talk about is control versus power. And the, I use this a lot when I'm in social situations in that um, there is a lot of, um, I don't know, it's sort of a bit of self-satisfaction when you go out and you're able to action the plan that you put in place for yourself. And the reason for that is that you're gaining back your power. You're not letting food control you and you're not there overindulging and binging and getting stuck in this cycle of looking for um, the reward from food which never comes you only end up by overindulging ending up ending up feeling worse so by taking back your power and implementing your own plan it actually builds a lot of confidence moving forward and so then the next social situation you find you don't even really think oh like this is actually this is not actually even an issue for me to be in this social situation i can be here i can enjoy a couple of glasses of wine some food um, but i know that i'm not going to go overboard because i haven't been in that scarcity mindset and then go out and completely binge and i guess that's the point where all of us want to get to and trust me girls, I was that person um, that used to avoid social situations because I felt like I couldn't control what I was eating. I'd get there and there'd be all this food there that I hadn't eaten in a while. I'd have one or two and then all of a sudden I'd lose control and before I knew it, I had all this food in my mouth. I'd overindulged and I was like, why did I even do that? I didn't even enjoy the process of actually consuming all that food as opposed to going in with a plan and saying, this food is here always. There is always cheese boards. There is always nice bottles of wine. Sit back and actually enjoy them, but enjoy them in moderation and know that you can because you have the power to choose. The other thing I love to do when I'm in a social situation is actually enjoy the social element. 
not go there and focus on say the beautiful grazing table move away from that and if you're at the pub move away from the bar put your drink down and really focus on enjoying the company that you're in really get engrossed in the conversation and i know certainly for somebody who works a lot i really um, appreciate being able to sit back and really chat to friends and jez and all of my you know beautiful um, people that i have around me to actually just enjoy their company so i hope that those little strategies helped let me know what you think and that's week two um, feel free to comment and share what you'd like to hear more about next week. As I said, I will be going over more of my training and my strength progressions. Have a great week and I can't wait to speak to you soon. Bye.